But, you know, there's a story, and I, I tell this in the book, but I think it's really important. There were a lot of misconceptions and perceptions on both sides. And I tell this story, so we're doing one of these meetings, and after the meeting, we do like, you know, punch and cookies, and everybody's just mixing around. And, and this nurse comes up to me, and she says, you see that funeral director in the corner? She's whispering in my ear. And I said, yes. And she says, I told the guy that I w- I went after the death with a family, and I really needed for us to move the deceased. And so I called, and I really needed for the deceased to be moved quickly. So I really think that guy over there, you know, dropped the ball. So then I quietly went over to the funeral director, and I said, do you see that nurse over there? She said she spoke with you on the phone around, you know, removing a deceased, and she really felt that you dropped the ball. And the funeral director had this incredibly surprised look on his face. And he said, I got up uh, in the middle of the night, because I do removals myself, and I got a cup of coffee. I took a shower. I got my hair all put together. I got my suit on. And I got in the car and we, you know, and I stopped. I thought I would get some coffee for the family and so on and so forth. And I said, oh, I said, I can tell you already what the what the perception problem is and what happened. And he said, uh, what are you talking about? I said, well, come with me. So brought him over to the nurse. And in hospice, when a family calls, it's all about the family in the moment right away. And so nurses throw on scrubs. Their hair is, uh, you know, a mess. You know, male nurses are unshaven and so on and so forth. It's like, it's get to the bedside as fast as you possibly can. Right. And the funeral director was just trying to be professional. He was. Yeah, he didn't want to show up unshaven. If, if I mean, if the funeral director shows up unshaven and, and his hair is not combed and he's wearing sweatpants, that's not great. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, so when, so when I got the nurse together, I said, I think you're just not used to how they are. And I said, the funeral director, I think you're not used to then, you know, how the nurse and they both like then compared notes and they actually laughed. And interestingly enough, that nurse promised to always call that funeral director and talk more in detail about what was going on with the family and the perceptions. And, you know, that's just around potentially, you know, trying to remove a, a deceased. I am a big proponent that hospice should be calling if i'm a social worker with a hospice with a hospice patient and they say i've chosen this funeral home why are we not hospice calling the funeral home and saying hey heads up um, this patient is dying they are potentially coming here's what's going on and if there are life celebration conversations and things like that let's get a jump start on it let's all be part of a team 